Today we are driving through the southern shore and we are heading for a hike which is somewhere between the cities of Villafranca and Furnas. I kind of knew about the existence of this place but have never really visited it yet. This is the trail which we are about to do today. The hike starts on the main road near the sign to Amora Beach. Once you start the hike, you will get amazing views of the coastline and the beach, to which you need to take a little detour if you would like to visit it. If you are not planning to do the full hike, you could just visit the Amora beach, which is a very peaceful, volcanic beach and it only gets a very few visitors. The hike is short, it takes 15 to 20 minutes and it is not possible to go down by car. You will need to take good shoes, because the road leading to the beach is a steep, dirt road. For the best experience, try to go during low tide. Now, we took a little detour from the original hiking trail to visit the Amora beach. To get back to the Ponta Garza Lobeira trail, it is necessary to return back by the dirt path stairs which led down to the Amora beach. Keep hiking up until you see the crossroad where you made the detour to the beach. Then, to get back on the trail, you need to take the right and again start descending towards sea level. There are a lot of uphills and downhills, so you will get amazing views. The majority of the path of this trail runs through a small, sometimes a very narrow pathway. You will pass a couple of other beaches, a small house and a traditional vineyard. The length of the hike is around 5.5 km and it takes approximately 2.5 hours. While we hike through the beach here, we are going to give a very quick follow-up story to the previous video which was on who integrated the Azores to the map of Europe. We already know that the settlement on different islands happened in different times and also that it had quite a slow pace because the crown was investing money and energy into different affairs, into their priorities. Now the follow-up story is that uh, where there are actually two and the first one is that what were the struggles of the first settlers and the second is that why would people even want to move to the Azores? Arriving and settling on the island was not easy for the first settlers because there was practically nothing. And since it's a volcanic archipelago, also the coastlines were not so much accessible. They had to raise animals, they had to find drinking water, they had to raise the animals for food and also for transportation. There were no houses, no boats, so they had to construct everything. They also had to make their own tools for agriculture and for housing. And plus there was always a risk of a volcanic eruption and earthquakes. 
And now the second part of the follow-up story, and that is that why would people even want to come here? Apparently there were many different reasons and motivations. Many people just saw it as a great opportunity to move and to start a new life on a new place. Also the benefits such as the exemption of the fee which was granted by the crown seemed uh, quite attractive. And now also people who were dishonored on the mainland saw moving as a great opportunity because they saw the Azores as a foreign place where they didn't know anybody and nobody knew them. So this means that many thought they could just regain their social status and they just saw the islands as a kind of a refugee place. That was the fun fact and now we go and finish the hike.